Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. I'm Wired to Inspire, Mentor from Afar, with Robin Nicole, the Inspiration Specialist. I read a review in the New York Times about the color purple on a Sunday morning. I got out of bed with my pajamas on, put the coat on over my pajamas, went to the bookstore to get the book after reading the review. I started reading it in the bookstore. Dear God, I'm 14 years old. Please tell me what's happening to me. That is my story. Oh my God. Somebody else has this story? I go home, I finish the book that day. Before the bookstore closes, I'm back in the bookstore getting every book that they had, which I think was like eight at the time. I buy all of those books, I hand them out to everybody I know at work, and I become obsessed, literally obsessed with the color purple. And I would walk across the Wacker Street Bridge just so I could run into people who had not read the color purple. I didn't have a book club, so any way I can get you to read it, it's fine. And I would pass out these books. If somebody said, no, I hadn't heard of it, well, I happen to have one right here. And I heard that they were going to be doing a movie about the color purple. They was Steven Spielberg and Quincy Jones. And as it turns out, I start telling everybody, I'm going to be in that movie. I'm going to figure out a way to be in that movie. I get a call from a casting agent saying, we're casting for a movie called Moonsong. They called it Moonsong at the time. You're casting for a movie called Moonsong? You're sure it's not the color purple? Because I've been praying for the color purple. He goes, no, it's Moonsong. So I go to this audition on a day in Chicago where it was 72 below zero. So cold they had ropes out to keep people falling down. I had a cold, a sore throat, swollen and it wrapped my head and it was so cold that when you walked outside your eyelids froze when I walked in there I thought oh my goodness it is the color purple because I know every character I read the book I read for the color purple and not only am I reading I'm reading like for a major role they want me to read for Sophia she's married to Harpo And Harpo is my name, spelled backwards. So I think if that is not a sign from Jesus himself, I I never saw a sign bigger than that. So I audition, I audition, I hear nothing. I ended up months later calling the casting agent, saying, I haven't heard anything. He said, you don't call me. What are you calling me for? I call you. And we have real actresses who are auditioning for this part. Alfre Woodard just left my office, he said. She's a real actress. You have no experience. So I hung up the phone and I knew I'm not going to get the part. So I feel really terrible. I can't even believe this. I think this is a God trick. I think, well, God, what'd you do that for? Why did you take me to the audition? And I'm auditioning and it's a Harpo character and then I'm not going to get it. So I think it's because I'm fat. So I go to this fat farm, and as I am running around the track by myself on a cold, rainy Wisconsin day, I start praying to God out loud, and I say, I don't get it. I really don't get it, God, but I know you do. I don't know if this is some kind of joke or or what you're doing with me, but I thought you wanted me to have this part. And I want to be in the space where I can thank you for the opportunity, but I can't now. I can't. It's too hard. 
please help me let it go. Help me to let it go. And I start singing, um, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now, that song just spontaneously came to me. But when you first start to sing it, you really can't surrender. You're just saying, okay, I'm going to sing the song. I sang and I prayed and I sang and I prayed. I sang and I prayed and I cried until I could feel myself, let it go, and know you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And at first I thought, you're going to be all right, but you won't be able to ever see the movie. You can't see the movie, but you'll be all right. And then I, I kept praying. I want to pray so I feel like I can actually go see the movie. And I will be able to bless Alfred Woodard in the role. That I'll be able to say, it's a good thing. You got it. I want to be able to be able to do that. And in the moment I can say, I can now see Alfred Woodard. I can, I can see that that can happen. And I will be okay. My life will go on and I will not be bitter and I will not be angry and I will not hold that and I will not feel for the rest of my life, she got it and I didn't. I want to have that kind of peace. And in the moment that happened to me, somebody comes running out to the track and says, there's a phone call for you. And there was Steven Spielberg calling to tell me that. I hear you had a fat form. <laughs> and uh, he said, if you lose a pound, you could lose this part. And I ended up stopping at Dairy Queen to make sure I hadn't lost a pound. And uh, the next day I was in his office at Amblin at Universal Studios and got the part. I would have to say one of the fundamental turning points in my life was the, the color purple. Nothing has had a greater impact on me, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, in determining my path. Because it literally changed my faith. In that I could see it. It was real. It was real. The name of this particular story from Oprah is called Surrender, and it's taken as an excerpt from her personal masterclass, which was done over six years ago. I'm your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and today's mentor from afar, our first installment is the incomparable Oprah Winfrey. The reason why I selected Oprah was because when I thought about a mentor from afar, there was a season and a time in my life where she was very influential to me, and, and if anything ever came across or came my way that made me question myself as a black woman and my ability to achieve or do something. When I thought about Oprah, I thought that I can do anything. I've always been a woman of faith, but this had genuinely inspired me because I often struggle with surrender. When it was presented to me, when, when God showed me that I needed to do these types of podcasts, mentor from afar, I began to make a list of people over time that I felt have influenced me in some way, shape or form. And when the listeners began to share, hey, I would like to hear from, you know, mentors as well. That also kept the wheels turning. Now, the interesting thing is this months ago, Oprah was selected. But just this past week, she won an award for the Golden Globes and she gave a rousing speech. And honestly, I teared up when I listened to the speech because it was so empower empowering. And she did not only speak of the women, but she also spoke of the men who helped the women be great. So with that being said, guys, when you think about everything that she talked about in this particular segment, what I want you to think of as some takeaways is the following. Is there anything in your life that you're facing that God promised you and you are caught between surrendering and sticking to it? Because when you are in that space 
and you know that you literally have to let something go, but you have no idea how you can let it go, why you have to let it go, because you know that it's not coming together the way you thought that it would. And I want you to go back and and pay attention to something. Even when they nicknamed the movie Moonshine. So what I mean by that is this, guys. Pay attention to what's going on in your life. The Lord could have something disguised one way just to see if you're going to still be obedient to it. Now, what if she would have acted ugly? Now, she did say, she said, oh, you know, well, I pray for the color purple. But you know what Oprah did? I hope y'all caught that. She still went to the audition and it was for Moonshine. She had no idea Moonshine was actually the color purple. She had no idea that someone stepped in and said, hey, let's mask the actual name of this project because we don't want people coming in thinking one thing and it's actually something else. That is a very, very powerful thing to consider. How many of us that are in this moment listening to this show have that issue going on in your lives right now? You literally have something right there and you feel like, okay, well, I I wanted to be an actor, so I'm going to take the, the, the chance, but it's not what I wanted. Is anybody in that space right now? Because let me tell you something, it's in that space right there of obedience. That's the part where God is going to be able to move and take action. I'm not talking about the big major parts that you heard. It's those little moves that we make and those little crevices of time is that stuff that adds up it's that stuff that gets us to the ordained place it gets us to the place that God wants us to be in so right there in that moment when she had the choice she said well you know what what let's just let's imagine how it would have played out if she would have said well that's not the color purple I'm not doing it and I don't know who needs to hear this but somebody is listening to this and you literally just cut something off or somebody off because you thought it wasn't God you thought that it that wasn't it But maybe God is protecting you by sending it to you another way, because perhaps he knows that if he gave it to you on the platter, maybe you wouldn't know how to act. Maybe he knows that your level of maturity, if you were in full awareness of it, would cause you to default and mess it up before it reached completion. Perhaps that is something that God wants you to think about. Perhaps that's something God wants you to muse on because the thing that she did, despite it not being what she thought, she said, you know what? I'm still going to go for it. So sometimes we still just have to go for stuff, even when we know our eyes are on the prize. And I think ultimately, because she had already come to the conclusion, you know, what her father said about her acting, she decided, you know what? Hey, I, you know, it's an acting gig, so I'm going to still go check it out. Okay, so she still went to go check it out because ultimately, even though it wasn't a color purple, she still said in the beginning she wanted to be an actor. So that was still an opportunity to act because her main goal was to act. That's just like when you want to get married, you know, and and you're fixated on a particular person and. But the goal is to get married. You want to get married in a situation that God has for you. Again, that's just an example of showing you how we have to learn how to focus on the promise keeper and not the promise. Because if we get caught up in the logistics and if we get caught up in what we think it should be, we will continuously miss God moving fiercely and productively and greatly and mightily on our behalves. So I want you to pay attention to something else in this story. Literally everything across the board was masked as something else. Literally. Because not only, not only was the movie called something else when she went to the audition, but she didn't even realize that when she called to see if she got the part, she got slammed. Even that was something God allowed. Her getting slammed was disguised as a diss when in actuality it was propelling her to actually get the role. Because even then it was like God had to send somebody to let her know, you know, in, in no uncertain terms, mind your business. Like I got this. You know, I, I know you might you might normally be in control and Whatever, but I'm working on a bigger thing for you, oh. I'm not just trying to get you in this movie. I'm about to make you the first black female billionaire. That's what I'm about to do for you. Okay? So I'm going to set you up with this syndicated national TV show. It ended up being international TV show. And I need you to let me be God, though. So the man slammed her. And when that happened, she said, okay, 
She then did what we all do. We take matters into our own hands and we said, well, you know what? Forget it. I thought that's what it was. They played me. I'm done. I'm moving on with my life. So she said, you know what? I'm too fat. She had already deduced that she was inadequate to receive the part. How many times do we do that part? How many times do we begin to feel that who we are is not good enough? So we begin to quote unquote, cut the fat, which is what she was literally attempting to do because it was too much. And she did not have any idea. It was her fat. It was who she was authentically. It was who she was, not who she thought she needed to be. It was who she was that had the blessing marked with her name on it. That's it. And when he hit that, yeah, if you get any smaller, however he said that, psh, you could lose the part. And then she had to run over there to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream to make sure she didn't lose any weight. That is nothing but God. It was literally him saying, listen, I need you to be who I made you to be, but you have to let me do it. You have got to let me do it. You have to let me do it. You can't do it. I have to do it. Now, if you want it to be great, if you want all of your hard work and everything that you put into this thing to be great, then you got to let me do my part. You have your part and I have my part. I take care of the faith. You take care of the works. You do your work. When I let you know that there's an opportunity coming, you learn your lines, you study with your books, whatever it is that opportunity is for you. But then when it comes to the faith and the supernatural and we moving those things together, you got to let me do me. You can't push that process for me because that's the only way I'm going to give you the very thing that you're believing me for. And moreover, as I close, she said she thought God told her, gave her confirmation. She kept saying throughout the story she had kept she kept getting confirmations. I can completely identify with that. There was a situation in my life where I got so many confirmations about a particular person. I thought sh for sure it was going to go down. Like I was like, oh, yes. OK, God, if I get another another thing. And the reason why I knew it was God was because it was just it was not contrived at all. Like it was just very organic. It was genuinely from the Lord. I wasn't around him. I wasn't. You know, trying to figure nothing out. It was just genuinely coming to me piece by piece by piece. And then when that abruptly changed, I was like, okay, well, forget it. Because now I'm feeling like I'm crazy. So I can totally identify with her. But the thing that you learn, the most important thing that you learn is to surrender. And the most powerful part, because there are many powerful parts to this, because this literally shaped my life several years ago, six years ago when it came out, it came in right at a time where I needed it the most. But I'm going to say this, one of the most powerful parts of this entire segment, if not the most powerful is when she said the prayer, Lord, let me be happy for Alfre Wooder. So even if I see her, I'm going to be totally fine with it. Like I could literally watch the movie and be like, yeah, I see why that wasn't for me. I, see, I get it. It's the same way. It's the same conclusion I had to come through per come to personally. Well, okay. Well, if that person is with someone else, well, all right, I get it. It's cool. I don't have no problem with it. That is the most powerful prayer you can pray because that is when you are telling the Lord, even though I've been believing for this thing, I thought you told me a million times. That's what it was. But then it blew up in my face, even though everything I thought it was going to be, it didn't happen. I still trust you. I still believe you. And I want to stay in a state of grace in the state of gratefulness. I want your graciousness. I want your mercy. I want to make sure that I'm in alignment with you. And I genuinely do not want any ill will, any ill will whatsoever, because I want to be able to walk into what's actually mine. If this is not mine, I'm fine with it. Let me tell y'all something. I could have posted the speech from the other day at the golden Globes because that indeed was a tearjerker, but I felt this was more powerful for the mentor from a far segment because it's these types of things that as a mentee, you don't necessarily have to know the person or, or be in close contact with that person or they, they don't even have to know you exist. But when you put out information like that, it literally pours into the person and allows them to stretch, allows them to get themselves out of that rut when they felt like things couldn't change. And I personally believe that with this surrender segment, Oprah gave a shining example of what a true mentor could be 
and what they should be. She told about one of the most transparent, vulnerable times in her life. And when you are really showing people your true authenticity, all it can do is inspire them to live their authentic purpose. And that is the main ingredient with Mentor From Afar. I always want to find people where I can say that tagline. They are wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. And it's not so much because they set out to make you do that. But it's because they are committed to doing that for themselves that it inspires you to begin to do it for yourself. And that's what I think makes a tremendous leader and a tremendous mentor because the focus is on the greater good. The focus is on making sure that you give yourself out. You, you, you die empty. You pour out what it is that you have so that you can take people up, bring them to the next level and teach them how to be who they are. It is also imperative that when you are in a position of mentor and you are in a a leadership position, a teaching position, just when you are in a position to instruct or add some type of value, you always want to be who you authentically are. And I believe that that is something that I truly saw from her core in that segment. So thank you all very much for listening to Mentor From Afar. Join me next Friday where I will feature another mentor who will wire to inspire us to live our authentic purpose. God bless. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist.life or I'm wired to inspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.